Hello, everybody. I hope you are ready because as we approach 2024, we have massive shifts going on. I should warn you, it's Mercury retrograde. Something weird is going on with my lens. So I'm going to keep looking over here. Hopefully everything is okay, but I just want to give you a heads up on that. So we have Raphael in here. Okay. So Raphael, people might start laughing and saying, well, Archangel Raphael comes forward because everyone is doing these New Year's resolutions. They're <laughs> trying to get healthy. But the thing that we don't really remember about Archangel Raphael is that he oversees the heart space and soulmates, soulmate connections, travel, learning through travel, okay? And he protects us in that way. So this is more than getting healthy, I mean, which is wonderful, and of course work with Raphael to help you with that. But this has a lot to do with healing old wounds stopping old habits. This is going to be an especially effective time for someone if you have lived your life with low self-esteem, low sense of value, and maybe you have been denying yourself love, for example, like you retreat from the world or you don't let anybody in, or maybe you're somebody who, you know, you don't commit to a healthy relationship, maybe because you think you're not deserving and so you just keep dating and finding some reason not to be connected in the heart space with somebody. Whatever is going on for you at this time, massive shakeups. I just heard that, massive shakeups, and in a good way. So this is Archangel Raphael in here, and he has this loving, fatherly uh, kind of energy. Very jovial, kind, warm, obviously, right? <laughs> so when you work with Archangel Raphael, this is a very special experience. A lot of people, I think, ignore Raphael or they work away from him. Yeah, I'm hearing because a lot of people want to avoid. They want to avoid what's going on in the heart space or they feel like their heart has betrayed them at some point in their lives. And so we don't usually, you know, work on that. This is the time to do that, especially as we were coming up on 1-1. One, one. Yes, so 2024 in numerology is an eight year. So eight is, it's more than abundance, but yes, it can be abundance, but how you define the abundance is really important. Okay. So, um, for example, let me think of an example. Um, <laughs> well, I, I moved into this house. I moved, um, you guys know, I've been talking about, I've moved back to my hometown and I moved back to Ohio and, um, it was really hard to find housing. It was like exceptionally hard. I don't know what the heck's going on, but it was like no, no availability or the prices were insane. And I ended up finding this house. Now this house is a very old house, needs some work, but I love this house. I love it. It has a beautiful energy here. I It's weird and I'm going to sound like such a weirdo for saying this, but even cleaning it, it's almost like I feel this uplifting feeling. Um <laughs> And like we can joke and say it's like it's almost like the house is thanking you for taking care of it you know kind of thing I know it's, it's not like really the house is thanking me but you see what I'm saying so you know on the surface it might you know for someone who doesn't understand what this whole journey has been it could be like oh wow you end up in a house that needs a lot of work I don't see it that way I ended up in the perfect house for me I'm very fortunate to have it my landlord, I couldn't ask for a better landlord. He's so kind. He and his wife are just beautiful people. I'm very, very fortunate. So that's this kind of thing. Like I feel abundant, whereas somebody else may look at that and pity me and say, oh, poor you. You're... <laughs> and again, I don't see it that way at all. So we have to redefine what abundance is. And that means stopping and it's going to be a year of gratitude. You're going to have to figure out some gratitude. I know, I don't know about all of you, but I know for me, Towards the end of the year, I don't know if you guys get reflective, but I certainly do. And there have been some open-ended things and some stuff, we're in Mercury retrograde, so stuff from the past is coming up. And there's some things that are, you know, popping into my mind and I start to feel resentful or regret or wondering like, what the heck happened there? Could I have handled that differently? You know, all that kind of stuff. But then here's part of the abundance. I start having gratitude for everything that that situation gave me. If it were not for those situations, I would not be sitting here in front of you. I would have never started Angel Souls. I would never have been down the path 
of trying to help others. Okay. And, you know, helping others while I'm learning myself along the way. Those are the kinds of things that we need to stop and look at. Not everything is being done to us. I'm not going to go so far as to say it's being done for us. I know that that is a very popular saying. I mean, if you want to stay by that, go ahead, but don't work for me. Okay. <laughs> but I can appreciate situations. I can appreciate different personality types and what that has taught me and the path I've gone in because I encountered those people. So that's what we need to be focused on here. Okay. Working on the heart space. Now I was talking about one, one. I've said before in previous videos, if you didn't catch it, I'll, I'll say it here. Every month has some sort of repeating numbers or number combination that has a frequency about it. The repeating ones, those are just easy to see. And one, one is getting back to you. It can be manifestation, right? And it can be mirroring. So this is something that goes in with Archangel Raphael as well. We were talking about soulmates. Now, y'all know me if you follow me for any amount of time. I don't like the term twin flame, okay? People get so defensive about that. And right there is proving why I don't like twin flame terms. I could go, I could I won't go there. But anyway, let's talk about uh, love counterparts, potential love counterparts, or, you know, that could be a family member or something like that, who mirrors you, who helps you see what needs to be healed within you. That is the one, one. Okay. 11 is a master number. This is manifestation. It's having breakthroughs or breakdowns, depending on where you are and how seriously you take in this. Okay. So be ready for that. This, I already feel it. And I'm, I'm offering my human experience as well. Just, you know, so you know, I'm real. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm a real one over here. So, you know, I'm already feeling some sort of shift. I'm already feeling like something's sort of there. It, have you ever done this where you feel like someone's about to walk up to your door? Actually, I just did this a couple days ago. I had family over for the holidays and I just went over to check because I felt as if someone was approaching. Sure enough, there was my family. They were still on the sidewalk, walking up. They hadn't even come and knocked on my door and I knew they were there. I have that feeling like something's coming and um, feeling like this is a year of big shifts. Now, this will be the case for a lot of you. And remember, the reason, big reason why I do this work is to bring um, angelic energy through, obviously, to help us heal, to help us grow, to help us feel comforted. But the angels come through to help us and coach us through these big shifts. Okay. And we need to be in that expanded awareness. So there are going to be things obviously happening this year that on a global stage that yeah, people, because people focus so much on that, you know, they're like, oh, well, why didn't you predict this? Why didn't you predict that? Why didn't you warn us? What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? I was talking about the pandemic. I, I didn't call it a pandemic, but I said that something was coming. You know, look at the 2020 to 2024 video I put up. It's right on the front page of the Angel Souls page on YouTube. Uh, I was talking about that. Did we know what to do with it? I didn't, you know, <laughs> we didn't know until it started playing out. That is part of our soul's contract. That is part of why we're in here. That's why we don't get all the specifics. It's why it's a little aggravating when um, we do have spiritual practitioners that are very much in 3D and 4D energy and they're saying, oh, no, it's going to happen just like this. They don't actually know that. OK, they don't. They don't. They don't. And they're like, well, my predictions have come to pass. Well, good for you. OK, so you got lucky and it landed on the one timeline you picked up on when there were so many potentials. You see what I'm saying? So please be mindful that we have these changes here. For a lot of people, this is the end of, uh, you know, certain areas of your life that you've been struggling in. This could be a time of reconciliation. This could also be a very magnificent time of people finally not tolerating toxic behavior. I know toxic gets overused, but I'm talking about people who they're up to no good. They're manipulative. They're not very kind, you know, all of that stuff. And, you know, they're not winning anymore. As a matter of fact, those will be the people who are breaking down constantly 
because their games are not working and they don't know who they are outside of those games. So that's going to be a tough time for them. So yes, we could see people acting out, but for a good hearted person, right? who is in expanded awareness, they've opened their hearts, they are compassionate, loving beings. This is a time of freedom, potentially a time of freedom if you allow it, right? Where you realize I don't have to make nice with you. I don't have to tolerate you. I don't have to let you control me, this sort of thing, okay? So coming up on 1-1, this is a very imperative time to redefine ourselves. Uh, You're not gonna make quick shifts, right then and there. It's not going to work like that. I know we all want, we treat life like it's a game, you know, just give me the answers to the test so I can hurry up and put it into place and then I can just live out the rest of my days in absolute bliss. No, that's not what we do here. We come in because it is a school. Okay. It is a school. So you don't get to just cheat your way through. You don't get to be conniving and cruel to others and, and pass. Right. So no, we're not doing that. So these are I would call them great awakenings uh, for sure. There could be a lot of information coming to you or to us as a collective. So this would be for the individuals and for the collective. Information coming through that really is enlightening. Um, And please don't allow your minds to go towards the very 3D kinds of things that are distractions. So if your mind went to, oh, that's right, I want to know what that celebrity is doing or what that politician is really doing or what, 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 all these people are getting exposed. That might be a part of it. Okay. But if you're reveling in that, you're enjoying that. I understand it's important information for us to know, but it's quite another thing to have joy behind it. Be careful where you're focusing your joy, right? I know that's a weird one. People might be like, well, we're supposed to not feel joyful that, you know, bad guys are getting called out. Um, I don't know how else to explain it, okay? But I I wouldn't uh, celebrate awful things happening to people. Again, for us as humans, we're not going to understand that very well. But energetically, stay in your lane, okay? Stay in your lane. Keep it even. Keep it neutral if you have to. But do not celebrate someone else's demise. Some of you are just going to have to learn that the hard way. Starting new things, these are not abrupt, for everyone it's going to be different, but for the most part, these are not going to be abrupt, stark, overnight changes. Again, that's possible for some of you, but for a lot of us, it's not going to be overnight. It's going to be kind of easing in and uh, trying something and seeing where it goes or um, having a conversation and seeing where it goes. It is a little bit of... um, It's not time to reformulate the future just yet. We have to tie up loose ends. And if anything, I would say this is the year of doing that, tying up those loose ends. But if you're not taking accountability, if you are not doing the heart opening, if you are not being kind to others, if you are greedy, self-centered, all of these things, that is very 3D, that is very ego-driven. And I keep talking about the splitting energy And you're going to see more and more evidence of that. Now, let's talk about Raphael a little bit more because um, I was starting to talk about the whole, the thing I don't like about twin flames, but (laughs) we have Raphael with the heart opening and soul connections. And then we have this one, one, this mirroring energy, right? There could be souls coming to you, coming back to you in whatever way that is to finalize some things. So here, let's, let's break that down. This could be finalizing some sort of lesson that you have. If someone comes, or maybe it's a similar kind of person comes and you're like, Oh, I see it. You pass the test, I guess. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know if it's a test per se, but you know what I'm saying? Like you, you sum that up. It's done. You're putting that away. For others, it could be someone, let's say coming in that um, let's say it's a friendship or something that never got off the ground, but you always felt kind of connected to that person and they come back around, you start to learn some new things about that person. You have a better understanding of who they are. So you put an end to how you used to see them and you start letting something else blossom, like a nice friendship blossom. Yes. For some of you, this could be love partnerships. 
if you're in a partnership, this is, again, for everybody, it's going to be different. Um, but this could definitely be a time of realizing what's working, what's not working, what you really want in life. More than anything, though, if you are somebody who's been afraid to love, this is your time. Okay, this is your time. You're going <laughs> to, it might be a little surprising for you where maybe you're so used to being tough and like closed off and all this stuff. And it starts to, your heart just starts to kind of like, I don't know, just open up little by little. You might be pleasantly surprised at uh, the love that is on offer. This is also the space where we have passion. You know, it's the heart space and the sacral chakra where we create from, right? Well, part of it, part of that, that passion that gets put into maybe a project a way of living, your health, you know, all of these good things. So please make sure that you are handling these coming days with grace, with love as much as you can. It does not mean that you can't have negative emotions. Of course you will. Uh, if you need to have a tough conversation with someone, don't be afraid. I mean, again, every situation is different. Use your discernment, okay? But for the most part, if you know someone is... Like you just get the creeps every time you're around them. Don't go around them. Or you know those family members, there's no reconciling with them. They're off the deep end. We're done here. Obviously, that's not what we're talking about when we talk about reconciling. This is more of us coming together and realizing that we don't need to be enemies. We don't need to find reasons to fight with one another. Understanding another person's perspective uh, but again, a lot of people are not going to be understanding that lesson and we're going to see it. We're going to see it very outwardly where they're doubling down in their opinions or their viewpoints, or I could go on and on about that, but I will spare you. Okay. But just keep in mind, if you do want to work on this, if you don't know, I do offer one-on-one -on -one services. I do angelic readings for people. You can go to my website, angelsouls444.com. That is my standard reading offering. Or you can do a live one-on-one -on -one session with me. You can email me at angelsouls444 at gmail.com. Uh, I wasn't scheduling for this week before Christmas. These are actually timeless. So if you hear me referencing Christmas and you're watching this later, don't worry about it. <laughs> but like I wasn't really scheduling things for right after Christmas. So I still have plenty of spots open if you want to get in for a live session or a live course you can do the connect with your angels course. You can do the uh, angel mediumship for one hour courses. You can do one of them, however you want to do that. I am teaching a course on the Merkaba and helping working with people one-on-one -on -one to start tapping into that and activating that. That's not for everybody. I would recommend that you take the connect with angels course or the angelic mediumship, at least one of those before you sign up for a Merkaba class. And uh, teaching a class on accessing the Akashic records. Again, that's not for everyone. Okay. So you'll have to do those other courses and then we can work on that, but definitely be, uh, working on, I know I'm a spiritual practitioner. So I'm going to be like, work on your spirituality and your spiritual wellness. Well, <laughs> there's a reason for it. You know, there's a reason. And there's a reason why I do the services, the one-on-one -on -one services with people want to make sure that you are in the best position to not keep dragging old stuff with you, to not think that, well, I've suffered this long, so suffering is just a part of my existence, or I've been without love for this long, I'm just not meant to be with anybody. That's not true. Not for all of you, okay? So let's see. I just want to see if there's anything else going on here because they feel very buzzy. <laughs> They're very buzzy. I was telling you last week that, um, of course, we have more guardian angels coming in. Be careful of the rhetoric you get drawn into. So Michael's a big force here, of course. We have Zadkiel in here. Uriel is in here. Shamuel is in here. So Jophiel, um, be careful what you're listening to. For some of you, this would be things that you're listening to about world happenings, um, opinions, you know, that kind of stuff. And for others, this could be as close to home as gossip, right? Um, harmful words, harmful energies being thrown around. This could also be a time of uh, karma, <laughs> you know, if you believe in karma, 
karma making a swift turn for good or for learning. Okay, uh, so be ready for that. And if you come across anybody who's very big on outward blaming, now I'm not talking about someone who has been scapegoated and now they're trying to stand up for themselves and they're speaking out and saying, no, it wasn't that. It was this, this, and this. And having some narcissistic person say, oh, see, you're blaming everybody else. The cluster B types, you know, I talk about this all the time because I have lived it. Thank you for you professionals out there. I've, I've met so many uh, mental health care practitioners who have no understanding of cluster B personality disorders. And it's really hard as someone who has had a lot of experience with that um, to listen to people not get it, to miss the mark, and to even use their quote-unquote professional level to um, sort of, you know, <laughs> gaslight my experience. I mean, it's interesting. So be aware of that. <laughs> Please be aware of that. But, you know, a lot of these cluster B types, they will observe and mimic no, it's not just sociopaths who do that. Not in my experience. As a matter of fact, I see lots of narcissists or narcissistic people mimicking. They want to pretend to be good people. It's what covert narcissists do, so on and so forth. So, you know, be, be aware, you know, pay attention to your feelings. And if you are doing your spiritual practice, that will be strengthened. And that's why I'm talking about this. If that is strengthened, then you know not to be afraid if as we come closer to this new year, you start feeling like, okay, it's time to finally take my health seriously, or it's finally time to talk about the traumas I've been through, or it's time to get some proper help about narcissistic abuse, you know, like it's time to work on that. And, you know, there will be plenty of people out there uh, who will roll their eyes when you talk about that that's just, oh gosh, that's just showing more and more and more how the darkness has infiltrated into these people and how, you know, you trying to be better, you trying to open your heart is is being thwarted, yeah, okay? Like people making fun of it. Look how many people, you know, put down spiritual practice because they don't like the wording that's used. Trying to get people to not take this seriously, to not take care of themselves in this way. It ends up being a powerful weapon to get you to turn away from all this. Again, I would not be the one to say, yeah, just go listen to whoever, okay? <laughs> like, don't, don't be like following a guru and, you know, or someone who's trying to be a guru. You see what I'm getting at. You know, just be careful out there. So again, if you want to come and work with me, Email me at angelsouls444 at gmail.com for the live sessions. I have plenty of spots open this week, so come on in. I'll get caught up on <laughs> scheduling that, I suppose. Or if you want it after the new year, now I am opening that up to schedule that. So leave your comments down below. Thank you so much for making sure that you are subscribed. It means the world to me. I am sending you all so much love and take care.